Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video we're going to be doing some upgrades actually to the $5 Windows 98 PC. This is a video that I'm very excited about. I've kind of mentioned this um, here and there in a couple of previous videos on this computer. Um, but as you can probably tell from the title, we're going to be attempting to upgrade the CPU in this thing from its current 433 MHz Intel Celeron processor. And after I uploaded my last video on this computer, which was the uh, Windows Vista installation, um, I actually got an email from a very kind viewer by the name of Austin. And Austin actually had a couple of Pentium 3 CPUs lying around and offered to send them to me, which I absolutely accepted and the package just arrived a couple of days ago. And inside, are two Pentium 3 CPUs, and I'm very excited about actually attempting to put one of them in this computer. Now, as I said, there are two CPUs in here. One of them is an SL4M8 uh, Pentium 3, which runs at 733 megahertz with a 133 megahertz bus speed. And the other one is an SL5QV, which is a one gigahertz Pentium 3 with a 100 megahertz bus speed. Now, I know from some of the research that I did uh, that I believe this computer can uh, run the 733 megahertz Pentium 3 no problem because I actually saw a image of a guy trying to sell a computer on eBay which I believe was the same computer and he actually had an image of, and you guys probably know from some of the videos that I've done on this computer as it's booting up you can press tab to display system info well he had a screenshot of that screen and the motherboard model number was the exact same as the one that displays on this computer and he had a Pentium 3 733 megahertz CPU in that machine and it booted up totally fine. So I believe that we'll be able to run the 733 megahertz in this machine. Now Austin mentioned that this machine, you know, if we try to put in the one gigahertz, it might work, but it might run at a lower clock speed. And it might even do the same thing with the 733 megahertz, but we're going just to try out the one gigahertz to see if we are successful in it. Now, as I've kind of mentioned, this computer, it is a smaller form factor machine. And because of that, it is kind of challenging to work on. Uh, now, in this case, the CPU is actually directly under the power supply, so we have to remove the power supply and a lot of these uh, IDE cables here um, to kind of get access to the CPU. So, I've got my trusty iFixit uh, toolkit here. We're going to open it up and actually get a uh, screwdriver with just a standard Phillips uh, screw head at the moment because that is all that we need. Okay, so we're going to start by removing this uh, screw right here, which basically secures the power supply um, into the case. The power supply is definitely mounted in a very interesting way. You know, it's not like your standard mounting procedure where it's kind of on the bottom and, you know, just kind of right next to the motherboard like it is today. It's actually kind of like suspended above the motherboard. Then what we're going to do is actually remove these screws on the back here is obviously, you know, it's got that, uh, you know, set of screws to secure it to the back of the case. This power supply, you guys can probably tell, is also a bit of a smaller form factor power supply. Um, I don't, I don't recall the exact wattage offhand, um, but um, we can obviously verify that once we actually get it removed here. So I'm going to kind of put some support on the back of this thing so it doesn't completely fall out. And we're going to remove the uh, the last screw here. And with this, the power supply should uh, come right out, which you can see it's doing that right now. So I'm going to just take the, uh, the power supply out here so you can see there it is. We're going to set it kind of right here. I'm gonna flip the case back over. All right, so we've got the power supply unmounted from the uh, from the case here. And this is actually a 90 watt, you can see from the back here. So definitely a smaller in form factor and also smaller in um, actually like how much that it puts out because uh, it only puts out 90 watts. So uh, what we have to do now is actually, well, first we're gonna set this off to the side and just kind of leave it there because we have to actually remove some of these ribbon cables here. Okay, so I don't think I need to remove the ribbon cables at the moment because the cables from the power supply actually wrap around them. And there we go, I've just got it unplugged from the motherboard. So there is our cable from the power supply. And then we also need to obviously unplug the uh, cables, the uh, power cables from, well actually we might not, might not even need to mess with that. Let's see if we can just set the power supply down here on the table. And yeah, that actually gets, you know, everything out of the way. So we still have the power supply plugged into um, the hard drive and the uh, CD drive. Um, you know, but we're not going to bother unplugging those cables because we don't need to because it's all out of the way. So right here, um, underneath these, and man, that's a lot of dust on that thing. Um, underneath these IDE cables, you can see that the power, the uh, CPU is right here. 
uh, this is the heatsink for. So we're probably gonna have to remove all of these. Okay, so we've got one of the IDE cables here. Let's go ahead and remove the other one right here. Go ahead and get that out. And then we've got our last one here. Go ahead and remove this one. All right, so there we go. We've got all of our uh, ribbon cables removed. So we're gonna go ahead and just kind of set those, see if we can set these off to the side. All right, so we've got all of the ribbon cables unplugged from the motherboard. These are the three slots down here that they were plugged into. And uh, we have them kind of tucked away, you know, same way that the power supply is, is just kind of out of the way. The one from the floppy drive is actually still kind of in the case, but it's just kind of off this way, because um, it was easier, you know, instead of trying to wrap it outside the case. Now, one of these sticks of RAM you can see is awfully close to where we're gonna have to kind of get into uh, remove the uh, heat sink. So I'm actually just going to, just to be safe, we're gonna pop out that stick of RAM. So just kind of get it out of the way so we kind of have some more room in here to work with. And for those who are interested, this is a Socket uh, 370 motherboard and it uses the Intel i810 chipset. So that is basically what we're uh, working with here. And yeah, since we kind of have to use this screwdriver to kind of, there's basically like a little tab that you need to push down on to kind of unlatch the uh, bracket here. I'm actually gonna go ahead and remove the other stick of RAM because the head of the screwdriver is coming very close to it and I do not want it to kind of hit the uh, stick of RAM as we are removing this. So what we need to do is kind of go in here at an angle. We need to kind of push down pressure on it and unlatch it like that. There we go. So we have the, uh, the, th this piece right here unlatched, so we're going to just go ahead and remove the uh, CPU cooler like that. And you can see right here it says PGA370, so this is a, uh, like I said, a Socket 370 motherboard. And to remove this CPU, we just have to lift up on this little latch here and uh, pull up, and just like that, the CPU should come right out. So there it is. And the information for this CPU is actually contained on the bottom, so I can go ahead and bring it up here. And you can see that it is an Intel Celeron. That's the model number right there, SL38A. And the copyright date is 1998 down there at the very bottom. So that is the info for this CPU. What we've got now are, I'm just gonna go ahead and open up the little uh, static bag here of the two Pentium 3s. So right here we have the Intel Pentium 3 SL5QV, which is the one gigahertz uh, processor. And we're going to actually match up the little golden triangle right there, which actually matches up to this corner of the socket. So we're going to go ahead and uh, place the CPU very, very carefully right in the slot. There we go. It is locked in. So we're now going to pull down the retention arm and uh, lock it in place. So there we go. CPU is now locked in place. Now, Austin actually also included a uh, tube of Arctic Silver 5 a thermal compound here, which was very nice. So we actually can use that. All right. And just like that, we have the... Uh, heatsink secured back on the CPU with a fresh um, bit of thermal paste. So now all there is to do is, uh, well, first we got to put the, the, the RAM back in actually. So let me go ahead and do that here so we can actually uh, get the machine to post. All right, so now all there is to do is actually reconnect all of our uh, peripherals. Now I'm only gonna really connect the hard drive because um, if this doesn't post, if it doesn't actually work, uh, I'm just gonna have to like, take, you know, unplug everything again. So it really doesn't make sense to plug everything back in until we know for sure uh, that it actually works. So I'm going to go ahead and just plug the hard drive in. And same thing with the power supply. I'm going to just, I mean, well, we have to obviously plug this cable back in to the motherboard, but uh, I'm not really gonna worry about like mounting the power supply back into place at the moment because if we have to, you know, get back into this, I mean, it, it, it's just gonna cause more of a hassle. All right, so moment of truth. Let's see if this thing is successful on the very first try. I'll be very surprised if it is because uh, you guys know if you watch these videos, there's always a, I'm not gonna really jinx myself. Let's just go ahead and turn this back on. So I've got the monitor powered on. I'm gonna go ahead and press the power button. Let me actually, zoom down here so you can see We've got the power button right here We've got it powering on let's go ahead and pan over to the monitor and let's see if it posts it is not looking like it's going to post because usually the green light is on right now um so all right, guys. Well, we didn't really get the news we were hoping for. Um, I even tried rearranging the sticks of RAM. Uh, they are removed from the system now, but even after kind of doing that, because this same exact thing happened 
um, off camera in the upgrading RAM video on this computer uh, where it actually wouldn't post. Uh, so I kind of reconfigured it to the way that I know it worked in that video and it still uh, did not post. So that leads me to believe that uh, this CPU is uh, is not really going to work with this system, um, which is unfortunate, not the result that we were hoping for, but we do still have the um, 733 megahertz Pentium 3 to try out. And that is this one again right here. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to actually try it out and see if by using that CPU, we can actually uh, get the system to post. All right, so a bit of a jump cut here, but um, I have inserted the 733 megahertz Pentium 3 in the computer. We've got the RAM uh, put back in, hooked up to the monitor. Now let's see, and obviously plugged into the, uh, you know, to the power outlet. So let's actually turn this thing back on and see if uh, my theory was right, and let's see if it works with the 733 megahertz Pentium 3. It's powering on right now. And there we go, we, we got a green light, check that out. So we're gonna press tab here. And um, so it's found a Pentium 3 processor with 600E megahertz. Um, oh, I don't have the hard drive plugged in, so I'm gonna have to plug in the hard drive. All right, so we've got the hard drive plugged in. Let's go ahead and turn the system back on. Yeah, that was the one thing that I somehow forgot to plug in. Now, this was the screen right here that the guy in that eBay listing that I talked about earlier had an image of. And this line right here, was exactly the same and when I looked up this line I got like this is the motherboard model number right here um, so that is a uh, kind of what made me theorize because he had a Pentium 3 733 megahertz CPU so that's what kind of made me feel that oh this might actually work okay so we're here in the uh, BIOS setup utility and I kind of am wondering I think the reason why it is saying that the processor speed is 600 e megahertz is it could be that this BIOS version does not know how to display a processor speed higher than 600 megahertz. Um, so it could actually be running higher than 600 megahertz. It, it might be running at the 733 megahertz, but this BIOS version might just not be able to display it. Um, so what we're gonna do is actually boot into Windows. I do have Windows Vista still on this computer. We're going to get out of the BIOS here and uh, actually boot into Windows Vista and see what uh, Windows says that the CPU speed is. Uh, but either way, if it's at 600 megahertz, if it's at 733 megahertz, it's still uh, higher than the original 433, which is definitely pretty awesome. I and mean, I think it's just going to be great because we've so far we've maxed out the RAM in this computer to the maximum 512. And if this computer, like this is probably since it can't take the one gigahertz processor, this might be the fastest CPU that this motherboard can support. So if that's the case, and we've basically maxed out both the RAM and the CPU in this thing. So it is still uh, calling itself an x86 family 6 model 8 stepping 6 this might be different than what it was saying before um, if it is I'll kind of go ahead and put that up on the screen right now um, because I don't actually remember the exact model number uh, or the exact kind of uh, string of text that it had here when it was running the Intel Celeron uh, we did get a uh, driver software installation pop-up it said that it installed the uh, a device driver for the Intel processor. It just says Intel processor, but it is telling us to restart our system to apply these changes, so we will say yes. We'll go ahead and restart now. All right, so here we are booted back into Windows. What we're going to actually do is press Windows key, pause break to open up the system uh, dialog. And you can see that right here, it is running at 598 megahertz, which is probably 600 megahertz. That's what the bio said. Um, so yeah, it turns out that it is not able to run at the full 733 megahertz, but this is still super awesome because like I said, we now have the CPU and the RAM in this computer maxed out. But yeah, guys, there you have it. That is yet another upgrade successfully performed on the famous $5 Windows 98 PC. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely be sure to give it a thumbs up. Be sure to get subscribed down below and turn on those channel notifications if you haven't already to get notified whenever that I upload a new video, which I do multiple times a week on this channel. Again, I want to give a huge thank you to Austin for literally making this video possible by sending me these two CPUs. And Austin, be sure to let me know um, if you want your one gigahertz CPU back. I, I'm probably going to shoot you an email about this anyway, but um, yeah, be sure to let me know. I can definitely mail this back to you if you want me to keep it. That is awesome, and thank you so much for that. 
Um, and if you guys have any questions or comments for me, be sure to leave those down below if you want to see any more or if you have any uh, hardware upgrades, uh, suggestions for this computer. Like I said, I've been thinking about um, getting a set of speakers for this. Uh, but if you guys have any you know, more upgrades that you might like to see me perform on this. But as always, guys, I just want to thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.